A story artist pretty much uh, blueprints a film, does a rough and dirty version of a film. It's filmmaking with a pencil, and you keep on making it until it comes out right. We can't just start from a script. We have to see it visually because it's a visual medium. Storyboarding is drawing a comic strip of the movie. You have to understand everything that a real filmmaker uh, does. It's story, it's writing, it's acting, it's staging, it's lighting. It's taking scripts, turning them into visuals. Sometimes we don't have scripts. Sometimes we have just an outline or maybe just a concept. It may just be the arc of a scene. Like we need Helen to get into the base in a very clever way where she could use all of her stretching powers. And so those would be things that perhaps I might come up with. An idea will come out of Teddy Newton and he'll have drawn up 12 ideas and I'll look at some of his sketches and I'll go, oh, that's funny, that's funny. I'll take those two things and I'll work them into this other thing that me and Brad have kind of talked about. So I came up with three different versions of it and boarded out three different versions. He came in and looked at all three different versions and said, I don't like any of these. But he said, I like this part in this one, and this part in this one, and this part in this one. And so I took those parts from the three sequences, slapped them together, so we have a fantastic sequence in the movie. It's important not to get too attached to any one drawing or any one sequence that you do because in the end, it's all disposable. You know, the story will determine what stays in and what gets cut. All I know is that there were a lot of drawings. I mean, I always drew and I always liked watching cartoons. As a high school cartoonist, I would be up all night trying to come up with something I liked for uh, my deadline the next day. My father, who got up at 6 a.m., would find me at my drawing board at 6 a.m. and bring me a cup of coffee. He was impressed that I had found something that I would stay up all night for. I just decided, I think eight or nine years old, that I was, I was gonna work in animation. This is what I was gonna do. I started drawing all the time, and I even wrote a letter to the Disney company when I was, I think, 13 years old. <laughs> my, my first real job was probably uh, as a stock boy at the food town. Making sure people didn't steal anything at my dad's grocery store. It was a grocery banger. I made sure the eggs were on the top. My first job was working at a theme park in Virginia as a, uh, like a, a games hostess. I also had to pretend I was British. You kind of got to get past that whole shy, I'm afraid of looking stupid. Committing to your performance and, and going with it, that's all part of being able to be part of the story process, throwing ideas out there, and when you're pitching something, you're, you're believing in it and you're going for it. A storyboard pitch is when the story artist sells what they've done to the director. It's just then, the ceiling comes down behind them. And you move through every panel telling the story uh, in drawings and putting your heart out there. And uh, it, you have to be open about it. You can't be a shy, closed off person to go, and then it was a dark and stormy night and, you know, there's this guy and he is, uh, you can't do that. You gotta go, it was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> lightning strikes and it starts raining and we pan down to this lone dark figure in an alley. Your drawings do speak for themselves, but you're sort of adding that extra layer of pacing and rhythm and sound. And you can use words or you could use actual sounds. Tink, 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 Sometimes the business can be a place of no, where you're always getting told no. I was working at this insurance job and I was getting pretty desperate as I saw my dream of being a filmmaker kind of slip further and further away. I would take long lunches and, and drive to Los Angeles and find either art houses or places that I, that I thought I wanted to work. And I would just show up in a suit with a portfolio and say, my name's Andrew Jimenez and I'm, I have a one o'clock appointment with so-and-so. And I would normally get these really confused looks and I would say, oh, it's Jimenez, uh, J-I-M-E-N-E-Z. And nine out of 10, I actually got in the door and got to meet somebody. Through doing that over and over and over, it actually um, led me to an interview at Warner Brothers, an interview I did get. 
the only thing to say is you have to learn how to pay your rent and be a creative person. And if that means living 48 hours a day, you have to. Draw a lot. Draw constantly. I think anybody who can draw can draw. No one can take that away from you, so develop those skills. Anybody that can paint, you can paint and don't need anyone else to tell you, no, you can't do that. Yes, you can. Learn how to draw and draw everything. There's the same advice which I took from the Disney people in their letter that they sent to me, doing theater, drawing all the time, taking classes. Great story people have great characters because they lead interesting lives. They, they live outside of their work. They're photographers, they're pilots, they're uh, chefs. They live life and they learn about things and it's all necessary for the ingredients to telling a great story. Mm -hmm.